All right, welcome back to the Tech Shack. We're actually outside the Tech Shack today for another low quality video. Um, today I'm gonna go over Starlink a year later. How's it going? Um, and you know, how do we have six acres here covered in Wi-Fi? All right, so Starlink we've had for all 10 months, not quite a year. I'm getting anywhere from 175 on a bad day to 300 megabits on a good day, and I'm usually averaging in the 200 area. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic. Fiber stopped, about five telephone poles up. We're the only house down here. They won't even return my calls or my emails. So I get one us as a customer, Slick. So Slick has just been just horrible to deal with. Honestly, and I, as an MSP, I have a lot of customers that are on them. And honestly, like between my Starlink customers, my Slick customers, my um, Spectrum customers, and my Verizon customers, nobody's down anywhere near as much as Slick. Like, it's ridiculous. So I'm kind of glad that they didn't come through, especially since they only offer 100 megabits sequential in my area, and I'm getting 300 megabits down. So granted, I'm only getting 25 up, and as a business and as you know, somebody who does low-quality YouTube content, having that extra upload would be great. Um, but for kids, three of which are getting into PC gaming, I would much rather have the added download um, bandwidth. So that being said, the only real problem I have with Starlink, and I think it's a big issue, honestly, is their um, included router does not offer any way to set permanent IP leases or static IPs. Um, I, even Spectrum's most basic provided routers allow you to do that. And I think that's a real major oversight considering everything else you can do. Um, with that router, you can see all your devices from anywhere in the world. You can have your, you know, your dish stow itself. You can have your dish mount the ice. There are just so many things you can do with that app for remote management, but they didn't give you any way to set a manual IP address. So unless you're just somebody mounting this to your roof, you know, of your RV, and you just want Wi-Fi at your campsite, if this is your daily, like, internet, primary internet source, then you really just need to replace the router, despite the fact that, yes, initially, I ran all of our access points, I ran all of our devices on their router, no problem, but every single time it rebooted, devices got new IP addresses. Now, so I eventually went to my old faithful, to my ClearOS um, gateway box, so that runs our intrusion de detection, that runs everything, I love that um, OS. The only problem with it, it was it was built off of Scent OS, and since Scent OS has been discontinued, even though it's backed, um, even though ClearOS is backed by HPE and they're still getting security updates and the marketplace is still getting updates, um, they're not getting any major feature updates and there's no plans for it to move to a new, um, you know, base distro. So there is, that, that project's essentially dead, but I still love it. But anyways, the internet comes into here, goes into the shop. Of course, I have that. TP link access point up there on the ceiling that's the first access point so when you come in here you can connect to there and you'll have internet right from here all the way to our backfield so then this CPE here then beams out internet this is capable at over 800 megabits and with their own little special packet technology um, it really does get 800 megabits 866 megabits real-world performance point-to-point like that is not an exaggeration. and That's not like a theoretical number you will never hit. Has a gigabit port um, on the back of it. However, my mini CPEs, well, these are able to do 300 megabits, five gigahertz. They only have 10 100 ports. So even though these both have a very clear line of sight to that one, and it's kind of pointed right in between them, so they both get really good signal. See, there's a signal meter on the side here. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't with it being so dark. They're so bright, anyway. So these two here, this one feeds the house and this one feeds the other wife's cabin on the other side of those trees. And this goes into the house. This access point here used to be on the back side of the house, but when we put in the cabin, there's actually a decent Wi-Fi range off of those access points. So um, I moved it from here over to here and that gives this whole side of the yard much better coverage. That CPE was actually originally mounted here because I used to have an office trailer there before we got to Tech Shack, but I just pulled some of the excess cable and I had enough to make it all work here without rerunning the cable. That's why it's all ran around the outside of the building. Go down into here. The reason why this is here is one clear line of sight and two, I already had to trench it for the power. 
So this trench was already dug here for power, so I just put the CPE in it, CPE pole in it, rather. And then that's the other wife's bedroom, so I don't want to go in there and, like, disturb anything. But there's another access point there, and I plan on running a pole out to another access point in the yard, and then we really will have six plus acres of Wi-Fi coverage. Now let's go in the house. All right, so we have a POE switch on the wall here. That uh, runs that, and then the other access point on the other end of the house, as well as the access point on the other end of the house outside. Um, this, I'm sorry, this is an active um, POE Plus switch. However, um, while the access points support both active and passive POE, the CPEs only support passive POE. So you either need an inline adapter to do the negotiation for you, or you're still going to have to use a, a separate passive POE injector for your CPEs. Even though everything is TP-Link, Omada, ecosystem, they still made the CPEs passive only. All right, so we're back outside of the shack with a couple of little final thoughts on everything. Now, the CPEs have been great. I've actually been using these older ones for, God, years. I have dozens of clients that are using them to link internet between um, buildings. But what I'm going to do now that the kids are into gaming is on this building in the house, I am going to put one of those larger CPEs and I'm gonna dial them in so they are just point to point directly at each other. So the house is no longer throttled to 100 megabits. The house will be able to pull the full um, 300 megabits we're getting from Starlink. And then I will take the existing two CPEs and I will reset them and I will take that one. I know I wasted a big old long outdoor rated underground uh, ethernet cable, but I'm actually gonna take that CPE off. See, I ran a lot of these cables before I had the buildings there, and I kind of just went on how it would look and how I think thought it would line up. I did not realize how clear of a line of sight the back of this one would have with that one. So basically, these, these two buildings are going to be linked. The shack with this cabin are going to be linked with um, the other CPEs. So the, this, the cabin will have a direct 100 megabit link. So the only access points that are going to be limited... Um, or not getting the full internet bandwidth are going to be the ones that are fed off the cabin all right so that that'll probably make things a lot easier for the kids and for bandwidths and all that stuff um, now clear os has really good automatic um, bandwidth um, allocation really really good load balancing it has a built-in speed test thing so you can go in and actually speed test your isp and save the results so then it knows like this is what the max this internet provider is going to offer and it'll won't let any any individual client pull um all the internet and basically you know saturate the connection so so out of our 30 acres here six acres i can walk around anywhere in that little six acre window and get close to around 30 megabits at least and then all the populated areas i'm getting 100 megabits you know but that's just because um most of the access points are limited by that cpe which is going to be the next thing i remedy but again that's it for this low quality video i'll see you guys in the next one